out for water, and out for water. And of course Moses heard their cries, petitioned God. Moses struck the rock and it split right down the middle from top to bottom. The Bible literally says the water gushed from this. I climbed up the backside to the very base of this rock and right at the base of that split it's deeply gouged and the rock on either side if you look straight up from the inside of that rock it's really really smooth but it's pressure flaked big chunks of granite have been flaked from the bottom and it, it, it's not a normal erosive pattern for granite granite generally from just wind and erosion will crack and flake off from the top down. This is coming up as though something came flying up and really gouged the rock. When that rock was split into, a geyser erupted out of the top of it. It blew those two pieces of that rock apart. It's very interesting. This part of the world gets a half an inch of rain every 10 years. And it's so arid and so dry. Yet this rock shows distinct evidence of water erosion, not just to trickle, a burst of water flowing from it, washing out the whole mountainside, going down and washing all the sand that's down below it, creating a, an ancient lake bed down below. Now you're talking about anywhere from 600,000 to estimates of up to 2 million people that came out of Egypt. If we were talking about a tiny little rock with a tiny little trickle, they would still be in line waiting to get a sip of that water. This place would have filled with water so quickly that that entire group of people could have come around the edges of this two or three mile long area and immediately taken their fill of water. It's very compelling. If you were to show the picture to somebody and say, well, it came from Colorado or Utah, well, you'd accept that. But if you say this came from one of the most arid places in the world where there are no rivers. The most graphic description would be found in Psalms. Thou didst cleave the rock in the wilderness and the waters ran down as rivers. And that Hebrew word for clave means to split cleanly in two. There is no such candidate or any other site that has been investigated or is currently being investigated as Mount Sinai. Following their theory of the crossing site, Cornuk and Williams begin to retrace the possible trail of the Exodus route from the Saudi Arabian shore back toward the mountain. Well, if they would have crossed through the Red Sea, at the point that we surmised. The Bible gives us clear indications of what they encountered. They would have gone three days journey into the wilderness and encountered the bitter springs of Mara. We went 33 kilometers inland driving. 33 kilometers is about a three day hike and journey through the desert. We came to these bitter springs. We went down and touched it to our tongue and it was so repulsive. For four hours later, you could still taste it. It was, it was horrible. The Bible talks about it, the bitter springs of Mara. Mara means bitter in Hebrew. And the Bible says and they went on and they eventually came to the 70 palms and 12 springs of Elam. We roll up to this group of palm trees and 12 springs of water bubbling up out of the ground. Traveling further north in the direction of the mountain, the pair come upon an awesome sight. My gosh, you look over there and there's caves. They look like Egyptian caves to me, uh, blocked off with this high barbed wire fence. And it, to me, it's the caves of, of Moses or probably where Jethro came from. It's very interesting to note that this city is known in history as the city of Madian, presently known as Albat. But if you look at history, Flavius Josephus and other historians talk about the highest mountain near the city of Madian as being the real Mount Sinai. Well, this would place Jabal el Laws as the number one candidate, according to the ancient historians from 2,000 years ago, from 250 BC, as being the real Mount Sinai. The bitter springs of Mara, the 70 palms of Elam, the 12 springs of Elam, they were like breadcrumbs leading you to a location. It was that simple. I guess one of the most intriguing things is, in an area that is close to the split rock, there are footprints that have been carved all over the rocks. When you pair that up with the scripture in Deuteronomy, where Moses says to the children of Israel, you're now about to go in and possess the land. And wherever you place the soles of your feet, God will give you the land. Now that's a very interesting thing, because if you are a wandering people, how would you mark out places that you had been? If the title deed to your land is wherever you place the soles of your feet, isn't it interesting that there are so many little feet it's very compelling. 
It's a full 10 years after Bob and Larry's adventure that both teams get together to share their stories. After Larry and I had been to the mountain, we had discovered that there was another couple of people, or a whole family that had been to Jabal Laws and had filmed it. And I got so excited, I called them and it was 2.30 in the morning in Saudi Arabia. And I'm sorry for doing that to y'all, but I, I called them at 2.30 in the morning and, and I said, hey. Uh, there was this excited wild man on the other end of the phone. Then I heard about these people that found all this stuff more than what we saw. So, but I actually have nothing but admiration for what they did to take what we did to the next level to further document it and, and to be so willing to share it with the world, really. Knowing that they were going back to the country and had access to some of these areas was just what an opportunity. To go to the traditional Mount Sinai, what you find there is a circus event, a monastery built on top of what would have been a holy site, Egyptians selling their wares. It's comical, actually. Uh, a mountain that doesn't fit the biblical description. As a police investigator, you know, evidence isn't proof. It doesn't prove anything. It's the interpretation of proof, and it has to be the proper interpretation of proof. Frankly, until credentialed archaeologists have come in, documented it, dug it, recorded it, written about it, do we know for sure? I don't think so. Is it the best place right now? Without a doubt. That's where you have to believe a little bit, but because you can prove that something is true in there, lends credibility to the document. And I think that in this situation, we have a monument to many miracles that occurred. Probably in the Old Testament, more miracles were performed at Mount Sinai than any other place. And what so impresses me about this site is the way it is preserved. It's perfectly preserved in time. We have more facts going. We have more religious history and academic history going at this site than virtually any other site. And some scholars will say, since they haven't found any evidence after the traditional mountain of the Sinai Peninsula, that the exodus never occurred. Logical but, conclusion. Logical yeah. conclusion. But look at the evidence in Saudi Arabia. It's all over the place. It looks like the movie set where they made the movie The Ten Commandments and just abandoned it. I saw a question mark in the Bible. What is that doing there? We stood on top of the traditional Mount Sinai and the Sinai Peninsula and we looked around. This didn't match the biblical description. If you find the correct crossing site, it's easy to find them out. Well, I like a little physical reality. This goes right through the sea. When you look at the great archaeological discoveries of the world, and they're found by people that are adventurers. When you go there, you can read the Bible like a map. They were like breadcrumbs leading you to a location. Mount Sinai should be in Saudi Arabia. On a mountain called Jabal Awas. Mountain range is going off in every direction. Jabal Musa, the mountain of Moses. There are none that are the color of the one you're standing on. And the Saudis put a fence around it, and of course they know exactly what they have. Something real, and here's the proof. I'm kind of like oh, the doubting Thomas of all this stuff. The world needs to know that this is not myth and It's very compelling, not allegory. It's perfectly preserved in time. It's real. Is it the best place right now? Without a doubt. We thought that we might be standing on holy ground. Why can't we ever put our hands on any kind of artifact that's going to show that the oldest of the stories of the Bible were true? If I was a district attorney, I'd certainly prosecute this mountain as being Mount Sinai. And Larry looks over and looks me right in the eye and said, Bob, I think we're making history. The evidence is overwhelming that Jabal Allah.